27 years ago, Final Fantasy VII was released in various regions throughout 1997 and captured the hearts of many. It catapulted the popularity of JRPGs in the West and is still the best selling game in the series. The game was beloved by so many that when PlayStation announced that a remake of the game was in the works back in 2015, it would be an understatement to say that people were excited for it. And then, five years later, in 2020, the first installment of the FF7 Remake trilogy released called well, Final Fantasy VII Remake. A full 30 hour experience of the Midgar section, which was originally only like 5 hours, expanded with more character interactions, new moments, added lore, minigames, side quests, and most intriguingly for fans of Final Fantasy VII, a story that is not like the original. Back when I played VII Remake in 2020, it was one of my favorite gaming experiences of that year, and finally being able to experience the second installment in the remake saga with the recent release of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth has been incredible so far. But playing through Rebirth has sparked something within me, not an exact emotion, but a general feeling. A feeling that I can't call nostalgia, but can't deny that it is. I was not around when the original FF7 released, but I did play it a few years before the remake released in 2020, so do I feel nostalgic playing Rebirth because of my experience with Remake a few years ago, or because I was so enamored with the original game's world when I played it for the first time, or is it because Rebirth is designed like a game that doesn't quite feel like a game that comes from this time period we're in. A game that manages to capture the magic feeling that games did when you were younger. The first thing of note for understanding both the original and remakes of FF7 is the scale that the game sets up in its story, stakes and world as a whole. FF7 is a massive game, with a story that spans multiple continents, multiple subplots that connect to one another, which then lead into the main story itself, it's fascinating to look back at. Many people resonated with Cloud and the rest of the team's journey throughout the planet, from Cloud's own problems, Red 13's acceptance of the past, or Tifa's internal conflict with truths. Lots of the themes conveyed here are heavy, but I wouldn't call FF7 an emotionally heavy game. That's because it's got quite a lot of goofy and bizarre moments that bring the tone back down, from Sid's iconic tea introduction, Kate Sif as a whole, or everything that went down in Wall Market. All these moments here are woven in between these powerful and devastating moments that creates this balance which is just excellent pacing. However, I can't say the pacing in Rebirth has been as good as the original thus far, as there's far more emotional whiplash between these light-hearted moments and the story, but it still works at making the story stand high and center stage, a lot of which is thanks to how this big open zone structure encourages you to dive into the fun world. When I first stepped out into the grasslands, I was floored. This was really everything I had hoped would happen in a remake of this world. Walking up to the farms, new areas, riding around with my chocobo, no more random encounters, quests that get you to explore the many areas of the world and a world that has some of the best artistic direction that I've seen. As much as Rebirth's story is a dark tale of fighting against a transnational government superpower, a rogue soldier with mommy issues, and fighting for the planet that you love, the world really does wonders at making you feel something for this world. Seeing the residents of Kam or in under Junon hoping for better lives away from Shinra, or just getting a look at how much of an influence Shinra itself has had on this world with the infrastructure sticking out like a sore thumb in many places. And interacting with these residents brings so much life to this world. Side characters who we have seen for the first time in Remake like Johnny or Roach, or the characters we knew would be coming back in Rebirth from the original like Elena or the Chocobo Farmers, they all breathe life into this world and really show how it feels like to live in this Shinra controlled place. Completing the main story is cool and all that, fighting massive monsters and seeing how the unknown journey will continue, but the side quests in Rebirth really, really are a standout for me. Helping a chocobo farm get back into business or helping transport a dog carrying goods, and the proto relic side quest. Those are incredibly fun and unique. These quests, with the characters that you meet in them, just help fill out the world of FF7, making it feel more human and in turn making the stakes of the story weigh that much more on you. But the quests don't just end there, as they also lead to character interactions and depth that couldn't be done in the original. One of the original FF7's biggest strengths is its cast. They've got great designs, writing and moments that put them in the spotlight, meaning you appreciate them. Moments from the original like hearing Red 13's story of his father in Cosmo Canyon or Sid's backstory in Rocket Town are standouts for me and are amongst my favorite characters in the game. However, as of where I am right now in Rebirth at Chapter 8, there have been so many more moments that have made me appreciate characters that I wasn't so sold on in the original and made me love characters that I already enjoyed even more. Take Yuffie. I was a Yuffie hater. She was an overall annoying character who just seemed to be against the party despite being with them, like tricking them in Wu Tai, but in Rebirth, 
She is still annoying and, dare I say, cringe, but she's real. She's got her morals and her quirks that make her feel like a person, especially how she treats Barrett and Coral. And speaking of Barrett, he's also great. I greatly enjoyed his presence in the remake and Rebirth just keeps that momentum going, and the same goes for the rest of the cast. My two favorite characters, Red 13 and Tifa, are even better characterized and you really get to see a lot of them in the side quests. Seeing Barrett go through a parental crisis about watching his child grow up, Yuffie acting like an annoying younger sibling would in the Johnny side quest, or Red 13 just accepting that a good stake will make him lose any important scent that he should be following. These moments aren't just funny, but they're lighthearted, and that's exactly what brings them to life. Finally being able to see more of these characters fully fledged out and expanded from the original just hits you in the feels when you think back at how you imagined these characters would be like, and that fills out the missing spot within your memories. I don't see many games that try and emulate lighthearted moments like this much anymore. Games are either overly serious or too light, and that's not a bad thing. The Last of Us Part 2 is a game that's incredibly serious and works because of it, or taking the most recent Mario game, Super Mario Wonder, which is probably the most light-hearted Mario game out there, which again is not a bad thing. However, I don't think many games manage to pull off mood switches this well anymore, or even attempt them as much as Rebirth does. Sure, it's a trope that JRPGs manage to do well, but it's nice to see a game this mainstream do something like this, which is just a reminder of how some older games used to be. And if you've been waiting this long in the video for me to mention it, Here's the mandatory rant about the music in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and Remake. This soundtrack has to be put on the Mount Rushmore of video game soundtracks. Its new tracks like this original song for a dog that you'll never see again is nuts, are instant classics, and the remakes of older songs, some of which carry over from Remake, and this tune that plays against the Midgar Summer, oh man does it take me back. The soundtrack rocks, Square Enix rarely misses with the game soundtracks, and with these Rebirth composers and Masayoshi Soken, the future of Final Fantasy soundtracks are in safe hands. Although I have yet to finish Rebirth, I can already tell that this game is something special, and will be a game that many will look back upon fondly. There is no surprise here that the director of the game, Naoki Hamaguchi, said that he had never been this confident in a game ever, and it shows. There are very, very few technical hiccups in the game, quests are well designed, the combat is just incredible, soundtrack, art style, writing, all of it is taken to the max. It's a great game for newcomers to the series to play, but for those who played Remake and the original, or used to play games a long time ago, it's a game that also really lets you appreciate how far games have come since then, and also how you can still learn from games you made back then. I'm not sure if that conclusion makes sense, but I want to thank you for watching all the way to the end of the video. If you enjoyed the video, a like means a lot, and a dislike too also helps me know what does or doesn't work when making these videos. If you agree or disagree with anything I said, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments, and if you want to see more from me, subscribe comes a long way in helping the channel out. One day I'd like to make a video on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, but before that, I've actually got to finish the game, so that's what I'll do now. Thanks again for watching this, like, semi-first impressions, if we can call it that. And, well, I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good rest of your day, night, and week. And with that, Storm. Out.